got this, you got this, and you got that, and you gonna murder this one and murder that one, yeah. talking all that bullshit, I'm gonna put it to you like this, yo. This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve, go ahead and play it back, you ain't gonna touch me, you not gonna do nothing, you are not above me, I bet you wish you was me, I know it, I know. What is poppin' everybody, and welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast. Well, you know, it's me and my only friends, which includes, but is not limited to, my sidekick that got a W yesterday. What's poppin', Burke? We're back, baby. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. We're back. We're back. We went on streams now. (laughs) This is two in a row. How did you win? <laughs> I didn't even watch that part. I just saw you getting wrecked. And then I saw you put in the running tap chat that you won. I'm getting wrecked. I did not get wrecked. He didn't get wrecked. He Fucking... didn't play any hands outside the King 8. Really? Yeah. I really got unlucky boring. with a bluff catcher where he rivered to pa- or, uh, river to set. And uh, yeah, I was stuck 30 for most of the show. But that was just like from three bet, bad flop, fold. Whatever, it was just like very continuous. I think every time I three bet, I got cold called. Uh, I got four bet twice when I squeezed. One was very annoying. I really wanted the peel versus Jew. I three bet King Jack suited maybe? No, King, oh, King uh, sorry, suited. I cold four bet King, King 10, 10 suited. suited. Yeah. And he found the five. What yeah. did he have? Ace 10. Motherfucker, I knew wow. he was light. I was <laughs> jammed. He dominated. You. I almost fucking jammed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's not going to call off. Wait, I'm pretty sure he had these 10. Those motherfuckers are so out of line. That they're always fun. out of line. Like, it's one of these things where it's like pre flop, they're all way out of line. Like, Jew and L, especially, um, but also, uh, also Han. But, like, once you get them to post, they just play like really fit or fold, yeah. which is even worse because you go into post flop with this mindset that they're way out of fucking line. <laughs> and then you're just know? like, wait. So it's like I'm I sh- <laughs> so like I should what I need to do is I need to not four bet hands <laughs> that that have like coverage. This is a new sake. this is a new term to me, but it's an old one for you. What is fit or fold? Uh, fit or fold is they play honest poker, right? So they continue when they have it, they fold when they don't. Just face up. There's there's no fighting. You know, there's no three to a straight, three to a flush. I mean, there, was some, check raise. there was some wild fucking <laughs> moments past post flop yesterday. Well, we'll get into all that. We got a packed show today. We're going to talk plenty of the Bally's reboot as Bally. we. Sorry, Bally. the Bally. <laughs> no, Bally's as in possessive. They own the reboot. It's Bally's Bally Live poker. I'm just reading the fucking <laughs> script now. <laughs> I'm reading what fucking Nikki wrote. Let me cook. Yeah. God damn it. Uh, we're also going to go over briefly the WSOP structures, which got released last week. Uh, and we have a nice, fun user submitted in the muck. But first, we got some highlights on the on the schedule. want to introduce a new segment called Who's Cooking? Ready or not, kill a con. Jumped out with my soul leaking. Going hard till I'm so eating. No chatting and no speaking. No death and with slow breathing. Damn, homie, you the man. I like that. Yeah, shout out to Conrad. He uh, he did the intro graphic. Good job, Excellent Connie. work, Connie. Yeah. He's cooking. I'm hungry he now. On, yeah, he cooked on yeah. the graphic. Yeah. That was Honestly. a good one. Uh, I think everybody thinks that this is the Lamana barbecue segment being rebooted, <laughs> oh. but no. Unfortunately, it's not. We will not be eating. <laughs> uh, but, Meat sweats uh, has maybe, been postponed. Maybe, be some maybe one of these days, it's who's cooking. You think someone won a tournament, and I just show up with brisket. Right. Uh, that's that's fine. <laughs> uh, the Meat Sweats corner might have to come back. That uh, intro is also fire. Yeah. Um, but no, we, we, uh, (laughs) we want to have this segment, you know, I feel like this show kind of has a a bit of a perception of being kind of critical, a little bit negative from time to time. And you know what? That's deserved. (laughs) I got to tell you, you're going to get plenty of that as, as today's episode goes on too. But, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we wanted, we wanted to, it landed taught me, uh, the best way to criticize someone is with a compliment sandwich. So we're going to start off with a uh, who's cooking segment. And the idea of this segment is just going to be highlighting people around the community that uh, are well-deserving of kudos. That are cooking. That's right. That are Mm -hmm. cooking. And today's list is full of poker celebrity. First and foremost, (laughs) got to tell you, nobody is cooking more than this man. (laughs) 
That's just too good. What is he doing there? I can't. Bro's fucking cooking is what he's doing. Uh, oh, right. he's playing the maracas. Yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> the tortua he's, bit. Yeah, someone's behind him going tortua, and he's like this. America. Phil I Nagy. He's shaking champagne bottles, guys. Mm. Phil Nagy is is cooking without grease, my friends. Uh, no uh, grease, dry. Yeah, just dry <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Uh, Leo is also cooking. I wonder he, who told him to tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly, they have no PR over at ACR. That's abundantly clear. Uh, Leo is also cooking. Who put the tweet out that says, "Twas the night before Sunday, and ACR bots swindled, colluded, beat players for lots." <laughs> The CEO waits for his plane to fly south. <laughs> Virtual dicks in his hand and his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually Leo who's cooking uh, uh, for the for the benefit of this segment. We appreciate the limerick that you managed to come up with there. Uh, and for anybody who doesn't know, this is a play on um, Nagy doing a "Twas the Night Before Christmas" bit. Oh my God, you're, you're right. Like right around Christmas. Wow, that's even better. When mm -hmm. they were like. Peak scrutiny yeah. for the bot, for the bot farm, <laughs> right. or whatever the fuck was bot going gate. on. I don't even. It might mm -hmm. not have been the bot farm at that point. It might have been something else. But anyway, no, that's good. Uh, yeah, that the, he's cooking. Well, wow, that was that was secret. I forgot about that. Bros are cooking. Um, second person on the list who's cooking. Big shout out to Caitlin Komeski. She got her yeah. very first tournament win. Look at her go. Uh, I'm told that she was previously a bridesmaid, but now she's a bride. Took mm -hmm. down the ladies' event. Collected some hardware. Let's After getting go. third in the ambassador event the night before. So the hot streak continues for one Caitlin, friend of the show. For one, one Caitlin. That's right. Just one Caitlin out there. Uh, She's the Caitlin. Other friend of the show. You may know him from Poker Out Loud or his course on solveforwide.io. Nick Marchington wins Man. the UK Open Let's event. Go. At I'm never going to pronounce this right, but we're going to give it another go. Good luck. Grossvener. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Nailed it. Grovener. <laughs> oh. All right, you guys said why is two the S different things. Yeah, why is the S silent? Don't talk to me about it, man. Govna. That's what it is. Govna. Yeah, yeah, I think I it's not the When the Govna told me. Govna. Like, it's not Grosvenor, I imagine. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think it's Grovener. I, I for, yeah, and if you pronounce it Brit, it's Govna. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So everything just becomes one syllable. Listen, I'm from Pittsburgh. Yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah. He asked me to run a spot for him from that, but I saw there was still six left. I didn't know he won. Mm. And, like, I looked later and saw it. The Bro graphic cooked. that he won. I'm like, Bro holy cooked. shit, you won a tournament. Yeah. Bro <laughs> cooked. Uh, his tweet said that Let's he's go, Marchi. long wanted some hardware, and now he's finally gotten it. This is a man who final tabled the main event, by the way. Let's let's not <laughs> pretend like his accomplishments are. You need a win. Are. Yeah, just one win. Bro did need a W. Uh, I'm excited for Nick to come back. He he grinds uh, the Bellagio a lot when he's here. So I, I see his face every single day whenever he's in America. Marchie's in the mix. That's for sure. Got a little extra cash to throw around. That's right. Marchie is cooking. Uh, and finally, the one and only... Jbex, mm -hmm. the Terminator. Bum, 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 bum. Bro is cooking. That's Rocky, baby. Cooking, baby. <laughs> he only got third. Third place was not a W, no trophy, but another no, fucking five stellar, four, five. stellar photo yeah. for a final table finish. Twelve K for third place. Not bad. In the uh, Venetian 400, I think that's going to move the line again. I'm pretty confident. Not a mutual mm -hmm. event. Not a mutually played event. Uh, unfortunately, but bro's still cooking. Bro's so cooking. big shout out to everybody who's cooking. Can we, can we give an <laughs> well, honorary, you guys. honorary mention? Round of applause for chefs. Who do you have an honorary mention for? Uh, the one and only BTC. Oh yeah, BTC <laughs> sous chef. Uh, Bitcoin is cooking. Bitcoin is cooking. It's on the rise, team. I, I don't think. I think it's gonna cook until it simmers maybe into nothing well with the, <laughs> All the way back we, to we, like to, we like to call that reduction so you know you, you reduce the, mm. the the simmer yeah it's it. getting it's getting very thick yeah <laughs> very saucy very thick. it's getting saucy yeah. yeah can i give myself kudos for who's cooking no but go on so the most uh <laughs> that is not how this bit works the, the <laughs> most continue. recognition i've ever gotten on a tweet is 10 likes who would have thought defending my boy uh landon would have gotten me 60 64 likes, likes. Uh, 64 likes. well see guapa what you've done here is you've leaned into the meme and mm -hmm. uh the the internet specifically the x really appreciates the memes yes yeah, i was proud of that that was a good job Thanks, well sir. done way to cook way to cook bro uh all right so we got people cooking we're happy about that we mm -hmm. also got people winning yep 
We're giving away a copy of Elliot's A Game Poker. We got a lot of responses on our prompt, which was, What has been your biggest mental block in poker? And some of the responses were Efro said, When I used to grind regularly, I would quit games when up a certain amount and tend to keep playing until I got up or completely buried. This is really common. Uh, Elliot talks about a lot of this stuff in the book also. Almost everything mentioned here at some point, I think he covers throughout the book. So obviously a worthwhile read for most. Angelique says that I can always win more and that they are bluffing me. Those two situations get me into trouble. I think this is like a really common one with uh, both beginning players as well as uh, anybody who has like some sort of chip on their shoulder where they feel like they're being targeted. We address this one for sure a lot at the Academy. Mm -hmm. Patrick Muth says, deciding when to move up in stakes and shot take. That's always a difficult one. Koi Jordan says, biggest mental block has been tilting from watching my friend's luck box. That's what I think he meant. Multiple tournaments while I get cooled over multiple sessions. We're all equally lucky and unlucky, and it shouldn't matter as long as I'm staying strategically sound. I think this is like a very real one. You know, the... I want to be doing just as good as my friends, yep. but mm -hmm. if they keep winning, it makes me feel worse by default. Well, so I can speak to this. Uh, Lamanna can kind of chime in. When we moved out to Vegas, uh, I was the biggest underachiever of our group by a long shot. Everybody had six-figure bankrolls, and I was like barely, you were poor. barely <laughs> grasping at like 20K. And I Look think at it, you now. <laughs> well, I think if you asked any of yeah. our group, they would have said that like I was probably one of the best yeah, of, of the five of us. For sure. Um, but I was just a chronic underachiever, and it, it added so much additional pressure. Because, like, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm firing it off. Yeah, I was right. say, you just go broke a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, I, I just went broke a lot. I wasn't in a steady stream of income earning because I was just trying everything. You I remember thinking, like, oh, man, if Berkey just had bankroll management, he would be so rich. Uh, yeah, but I don't think that would have been true. <laughs> no, of course not, but that's just what my... Right, that's but the underdeveloped goes. brain, yeah. underdeveloped poker brain. But the reason the why moment, I don't think yeah. it was true was specific to the fact that like I didn't have a lane yet. <clears throat> no, for I, sure. I was firing. In you didn't have. You were playing cash. You were playing tournaments. You were playing sitting. You play, heads up PLO, yeah, PLO online. If you, if you could find it, yeah, yeah. I was everything. playing like heads right. up PLO online. I was right. playing like live MTTs, yeah. live cash. Online MTTs, like mm -hmm. uh, it's probably not a bad thing though. You just didn't like. I mean, didn't it is when you don't have a bankroll. It is, yeah. yeah. And at the time, it's like, man, it just like everything was kind of lucrative, right? So yeah. it's, it's just like I'll just get into this because it's a good, and I'll get into this because it's profitable. And I, yeah, it, it everybody is. else you, had a lane. Once you did find, like, you know what, I want to play cash and I want to move up the stakes as fast as I can, and the, to like, I want to play the biggest games I can. And you focused on that. That's when you really started to see your success. I think it was ju also just like specifically once I decided it was live. Is that a personal right. thing? Live, yes. Or just like you think that's something that everyone else should follow too? Well, especially now, I think specializing is more important than it's ever been. But even back then, everybody had a lane. Brent was an online empty tier, period. Mm -hmm. Didn't do anything else. Nothing right. else. Brian was uh, like live cash with Sunday schedule online. Right. And that was it. Uh, Brandon was like strictly online with a little bit of live cash. Mm -hmm. Greg was strictly online PLO. Right. And like, that was it. Everybody yeah. had their lane. And mm -hmm. like, we weren't very mature in our careers. We were like three years in. And you just played everything? I was every, everything that they did, I did. <laughs> he also did. At volume. Yes. But everything <laughs> you played, you were probably winning in though. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, not probably, like you were losing in any of the things you were doing. Well, it's, it's the gambler's ruin. It's like, yeah, maybe I had a win rate and everything that I was doing, but I was firing such a big chunk of my net worth every single time I sat down that I had to go to zero. So maybe yeah. it is a bankroll management thing versus just like a skill set thing. Because it's not like you were losing in the stuff you were doing. It wasn't like you were just rocketing it off because you were bored. No, but it was one or two, three, four bad sessions, and then he's wrecked. Yeah. Right, right? so that's more bankroll than but, it is skill. Right, but it, it could have been... It, it, the, the, the reason for the lack of bankroll management is due to the, uh, the, the paradox of choice, mm -hmm. so to speak, right? Like, it wasn't about playing too big. It was about being too diverse. Like my win rate in live cash was probably much greater than my win rate in heads up online PLO, right? So it's like there's variance attached to both of, both of these things and uh, I'm not properly <coughs> curbing my risk when, when playing the one that I have the lower win rate in with the higher variance. I'm just playing the same stake. So I play 510 live, I play 510 heads up PLO online, right? And like those two things are not one not to the one. Same. Right. So even though... You know, the, the bankroll strain is technically the same as far as like me having 25 buy ins or whatever. Uh, it's wildly different when I'm dabbling in the PLO realm.
mm-hmm. where you're winning a bunch of hour, dollars an hour in one versus the other one you might be winning smaller winning but also taking on a ton more like the the standard deviation is just going to be the standard deviation might be like 180 or 200 for heads up plo and it might be like 70 like for full ring 70. live mm-hmm. you know what i mean so uh, i'm just like tripling the amount of variance that i'm undertaking it might have even been higher because we're all so brain dead so not necessarily bankroll management but just like hammering the highest edge you have just like risk management i think sure. yeah, yeah in general uh but yeah hammering the biggest edge being a specialist nowadays it's just like worth where a do lot. you think back then most of your win rate came from uh live live cash for sure so like in the sense of if you it was hard to lose, you could win like 75, 80, percent of sessions. Right. So if you just did that, you would have had call it six figures probably within a couple of years. Probably. Well, maybe faster. Faster. I was yeah. just calling. But, it, but I think I, I think the other problem was that um, I would have gotten bored. Was the friend group thing like predicated like success based off of just money, like using money as a scale? Well, yeah, because I think if you pulled them based off of skill, it would have just been like Brent and I head and shoulders above the the group. But you just didn't have as much money as Brent. Well, I just didn't have any discipline at all. Like Brent stick to his thing. Brent would grind, you know, the the eleven dollar rebuy and then the the five hundred reentry at the same time, and he had no qualms about it. Where it's like I would never go play one two live. Didn't matter how broke I was. <laughs> just i just wasn't doing it you know what i mean it's like i can make more money at higher stakes i'll just find a way um and i didn't fully grasp variance at the time uh but also i think that a lot of it stemmed from like i would have gotten bored if i if i specialized because you're 25 you don't you don't look to the end game right mm-hmm. you don't see it as an infinite game where it's like oh okay i'm playing 510 now and i'm making x amount an hour and if I really hone my craft, I can maybe one and a half X that. And then I can play 1020 and yada, yada. You don't, the, the linear progression isn't, isn't uh, very romantic because the outcome then is just gradually, it, it's like investing in a, uh, a sound uh, stock oh, or something percent like that. every year sounds great. Exactly. And that sounds great when you're like 40. It doesn't sound right. great when you're At 24. At 25, that sounded awful. Like also, I wanted to be Eric Lindgren. I wanted to be Negrano. I wanted to be the guys that were on TV ripping off big scores and like having the availability to play the biggest the, stakes. The difference in skill sets that it took for each individual aspect of poker wasn't clear at the time Correct. either. So it was like, very true, right? So, you know, we're just like, I just get better at poker and then I'm better at everything. Exactly. Where now it's like, it's very clear, like, what you need to do when you study tournaments, what you need to do when you study cash, online, live, heads up, these kind of different things. And so picking one lane and, you know, using all like your all your resources, your mental capacity for that specific area is going to be beneficial. There's more guidelines right. now than yeah. before. And, and to, to further that point, like picking a lane didn't really equate to like studying anything. There was nothing to study. Right. Right. You just got better at you the pool. You just did the thing. Well, you, you just did. got better at, at, at like population reads. You know what I mean? That's why like the crossover from cash to MTT wasn't that tough because it's the same, same people. dead faces in the field and they're all making the exact same mistakes that they make at cash. They're right. just doing it off a shorter stack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, off shorter stacks <laughs> and then at some point money gets more expensive deeper in the tournament. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like we didn't know that. You know, like we we had a loose comprehension of ICM existing. Yeah. We, we never even thought about it to the final it's table. It's pretty really. true, man. Like the or difference like in the way bubble. that when I first, I guess, got into tournaments, like understanding what bubble meant, I just thought bubble was like call it almost almost at the money mm-hmm. right like you're five people away like oh that's when the bubble starts mm-hmm. so it's like right. the bubble started like a hundred people ago yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's true uh well now that that tangent's wrapped up congratulations to patrick muth uh nice we randomized it you were chosen his uh Good job, Pat. his uh oh we already read it uh deciding when to move up in stakes and shot take was the winning one uh don't worry you guys are all in the same boat there's plenty to digest uh in this book so uh we'll be sending you well we'll be dming you on twitter and then sending you a copy of elliot's a game poker if you guys haven't checked it out be sure to do so uh very great book um all right let's uh yeah let's get into the muck let's let's roll keeps bringing it to me i don't know why he keeps doing that that's all right you can bring it to me <laughs> bring it to the turtle yeah bring it to the turtle bring it to the tortoise you guys realize it's the same shot right right yeah well you know what i mean but you know one of us has to speak they're gonna debate so uh we do have a user submission it's from uh borg 972 uh 
he has put in a um, bunch of submissions, so I'm glad we could uh, finally get to one. And uh, he's playing some 5-5 five, five here. And uh, so he, they're about uh, 100, or sorry, uh, 600. Sorry, I can't do math. <laughs> math. Right now. They're 250 big blinds. 250 big blinds, There we go. Yeah. Um, a big open from under the gun, two, plus two. Sorry, Landon. Um, to 35. He has two black jacks, and he three bets to 105. And it folds back around uh, to <clears throat> the opener who calls. Flop comes 10 of diamonds, 8 of hearts, 6 of spades. Uh, check. Org now makes it 80 into 220, and he's met with a call. Turn. Uh, four of clubs, completing uh, the badoogie. It goes check. He bets 200 into 380, and now he's met with an all-in, and he decides to fold. So he folds his over pair, and just before we start uh, getting into, you know, exactly why he's in the muck or what he should be doing, uh, just some of his thoughts. He said that the, the villain is a good experience winning reg, but plays nitty in this game and under bluffs. I think he has a set here a lot. Also could be trapping with aces sometimes. See him do that against people who can't fold to four bets. Uh, I don't, or who can fold to four bets, sorry. He said, I don't like the turn bet. He doesn't really have worse that he calls with, but checking uh, this blank uh, let, lets, him, lets him set the price on the river, and I'm sure he would bet bigger as he always bet, uh, bets big posts. And he said, I, I was playing to check the river. Also, my hand needs some protection to it. And honestly, I don't even like the three bet spot against his specific range from that position, but also would want to let people, wouldn't want to let people in behind and make it four to six ways pot. So I'm in the muck. Okay, he's in the muck. He is in the muck. There's a lot to sure. take away here. Right. Um, a lot to unpack here. But right. I just wanted to give his, you know, his <laughs> yeah. thought process throughout well, the Well, his hand. thought process is important because that's, that helps illuminate why he's in the muck. Right. Uh, okay, so first of all, I think one thing that a lot of people in low to mid stakes uh, fall victim to is this notion of being afraid of going multi-way, particularly with like medium strong hands. Uh, I think that there's a lack of understanding how equity disperses amongst multiple ranges whenever you go three, four, five ways to a flop. Uh, simply put, when you have a really good hand, it's going to naturally capture more pot share than when you have a mediocre hand. And the more multi-way a, 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 a hand goes, the more probable it is that each hand thereafter that calls is more mediocre than the last. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, every cold caller after uh, the initial one tends to be weaker than the previous one now that's not what happens in theory, but that's what happens in practice. So therefore, whenever you have like a medium strong hand, you and the opener are capturing the bulk of the pot share for everybody who then voluntarily puts money in the pot. Now that's not to say you win the pot at a high frequency. It's just to say that the amount of dollars that are in the pot currently are largely disproportionately distributed to you and then the original opener, assuming that you know you guys both have the tightest two ranges. Uh, and then so on down the line. The, you assume the third range is the third tightest range and the fourth range, et cetera, et cetera right? So the last person to complete it has the absolute smallest portion of pot share. And that's why we discourage people from just like flicking it in in the big blind. People love to do that too. They think right. like, well, look at all these pot odds I'm getting. I, you know, it just went raise, call, 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 call. I'm calling with anything. Right. What if I hit is, a big hand? I look yeah. at all this money in here. Right. Yeah, the problem is everything's dirty. Like your hand yeah. is just dirty. Yeah. So right. Just so like you might be so getting anyways. five to one, mm -hmm. but the problem is it's difficult for you to capture 20% pot share because, uh, you know, like Conrad's saying, you have a lot of dirty equity, but most importantly, you have the most diluted range. So you get the smallest portion of pot share to capture. Like yeah. And by like dirty <laughs> equity, I think you mean like maybe your hand's suited, but you're obviously not going to flop the nut flesh. It might be a bigger 
Uh, well, right. you just like well, you just flasher. defend like ace yeah. eight off, and you're yeah. bombed by ace ten, ace jack, mm -hmm. ace queen. So right. like you'd rather have four or five that doesn't interfere with all of the other callers, mm -hmm. but you can get like capture that section of the board if it comes out. Yeah. So like four or five is better than a hand like gotcha. king nine zero. Yeah. Right, gotcha. but but both yeah. happen low frequency, so you just mm -hmm. don't capture a lot of equity. So that's the first thing. That that's the first principle to understand is that step one. There should not be a fear of multi way pots. You get to navigate them accordingly, like. You know, if if we went multi-way on this board texture and it came 10 high, understand that, like, it's okay to invest money multi-way on that board, even though we could be against two pairs. We Like, there could be a higher concentration of two-pair hands, a higher concentration of sets, perhaps. Um, maybe a higher concentration of, I don't remember, was it 10.86 or 10.85? 10.86. Okay, Sorry, yeah, so a higher concentration of 9.7 might be in there, yada, yada, yada. Point is, is, like... So long as the action remains linear, over pairs are just going to be worth a tremendous amount of pot share. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody then decides to polarize with their range, we then have to go into bluff catch mode and decide where we're pulling our bluff catchers from, right? Would we rather have a pair plus a block? Would we rather have an over pair, et cetera, et cetera? But that's okay. We can work that out after the fact. We don't need to preemptively uh, you know, prevent it or, or create a strategy against it. Uh, the second thing now is the the decision on the turn or the thought process on the turn of I don't have anything worse to target, but my hand needs protection and I'm doing this to make it a two street game such that I never have to put money in on the river. There's a lot of flawed logic here, right? So first and foremost, uh, there should be plenty to target here. Your opponent should have plenty of 10-9 suited, 8-9 suited, pocket 9s, pocket 7s, 8-7 uh, suited, ace-10 suited, ace ten suited uh, maybe or, offsuit. Off suit, yeah. <laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, he should have plenty of queen-jack uh, suited. So all, all, or two combos, I guess, of, of queen-jack suited. Um, he should have, you know, 6-5, which is now a gut shot to the ass end. There's just so many hands that he should have that you can clearly target for value. And when you say your hand needs protection, that's what you're protecting against. Because what he won't have very much of is ace-king or ace-queen or king-queen. Most of those probably fold to the flop c-bet unless they have a backdoor flush draw, in which case, fine, uh, you get them to fold now on the turn. But we're not concerned with what hands fold. We're concerned with what hands we target to call. I have a uh, question. Is Ace King uh, folding a lot here against eighty? Uh, when he Ace King, no, but it might four bet. It might four bet though. Yeah, Ace King well. probably not. Ace Queen for okay. sure yeah. should. Yeah, some some, some Ace King and some even Ace Queen suited might might with back doors might might four bet pre flop, so they might not even be in range. Yeah. Um, uh, sure. I, mean, I, I didn't give Ace Queen four bet because like getting jammed on is kind of nasty. Yeah. No, still. I mean, I mean, it's, it's unlikely, Ace but 10. I'm just saying that like you know, percentage. Do we have um, any issue with these sizings? Uh, we can we can talk about sizing once we get to the wizard. <laughs> okay. uh, I personally would just play big better check here, but uh, I'm sure small bet's going to capture a, a fine amount of EV as well. Um, bigger point is that we haven't done anything polarizing yet. We bet small on the flop. We bet two thirds on the turn, and we got jammed on. This is a very happy call spot. Yeah. Uh, you should be thrilled. And one of the biggest reasons why is that he should have no nine seven in range, and you haven't polarized yet. So you should have infinite folds whenever you go quarter, 66, and face a two-pot jam or a pot and a half jam. Or whatever. Yeah, like 30% half pot. So yes, it. it's going to be a slam dunk call when like you're going to do wizard probably. Basically what you're For saying. Sure. Well, with, hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, but with what this guy is saying, like, like the player who he is, like saying this guy's tight, like he's just nitty for the most part. And like, do you think he makes adjustments there that it's enough that he can fold jacks here? Not on the turn. I think that if you have that read, then your adjustment should be on the flop and you should only be playing big better check. Yeah. Right. So if you don't feel comfortable big betting jacks, then it's a clear check back. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you reduce it to a two street game that way and you bluff catch two streets with jack because now you force his entire range to continue to the turn and river. Um, do you ever think you beat value here like ace 10 or no? Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't ever buy into the notion that you have such a strong read on someone being too tight that you can only peg them as queens plus. No. Like, I know even, Brian, you can maybe speak to this because you play at the Jewel all the time, but how often are you surprised by somebody who finds a check jam here with nines? Yeah, I mean... 
that's it, that you label to be too tight. It happens, right? And then when you see it, you're like, wow. Like, because you think that in your head, you're like, you think like, okay, this person's just like so tight. Like they never do this with these hands. It's only right. like top, top of range. And then you see them do something and you're like, oh, wow. Like maybe I'm like. Right. Like you just miss- happen to have top set of right. tens there and you yeah. snap it off and mm-hmm. then they just show you six, seven suited. Right. And you're like, oh, he's yeah. not too tight. Yeah. Right. So it's weird. Like it's very easy to conflate population reads with individual people. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know. People do things that you just don't expect. Where I played a three bet pot in a tournament where someone three bet and then bet jammed on 10 3 deuce turn six, which is queen nine, no flush draw. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't expect any of this to happen, but here we are. A yeah. Lot, a mean, lot of people bluff in different ways, like in exactly. very, 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 very fucking weird ways. Like, oh my God, homie's hand from last night where he had tens, and we'll talk about it later. But yeah. People yeah. bluff in very weird I, ways. I've been, uh, you know, you talking about Barry's hand? No. Borg no. Borg said that he's been playing with this guy for years. It's like well, there's plenty of guys that I've been playing for years that I think are way too tight, and I still can't really peg how they go off. Like a guy like Bob Bright's a good example. I would, I would high five call him on this board, and I think he's way too tight when he check jams, way too tight. Mm-hmm. But I also think that like he'll just like you know overvalue a ten. Or he will just like make errors with a nine. But part of it is, oh, I think when they double for this size, I have a 10 in each protection and value. They can right. have ace, king, ace, queen, and yeah. I don't want those to suck Matt out bluffs, on me on the Matt river. Matt bluffs way too much. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let him get there on me again, right? I've just punished this guy too often. So if now he has just, it, he has it. Exactly. And you had it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So uh, I think that there's just like way, way too much randomness in human calculation to have such a strong read that we're folding near top. Call it human emotion as a yeah. whole, too. Um, but secondarily, like the decision to bet two thirds is an interesting one, too. Uh, I don't know <clears> what it's going to say in the solve, but I imagine we're going to have an over bet here. Right. Oh, what it would say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, we'll, I we'll, see, we'll see when we pull up Wizard, but I would imagine if we're planning on doubling, we're just going to try to get all the money in by the end uh, and set ourselves up with like a GO2 size on the turn. Yeah. But uh, if that's not the case, then maybe we should consider a check back, right? Uh, we, we should be pretty happy to check back turn and then just hero call river. But those are the principles that I want to pull out. We can discuss them again after we see what the wizard has to say. What do we got, young Damn it. young Tice? All right, so uh, this was when I was... I got to start having two in the mocks where this first one is like the line that was taken. Mm. And then the second one, if I switch the tab, should be uh, what the machine liked. Like so that, yeah. we should start doing that from now on. By we, I mean me. Uh, so what the wizard liked when I first pulled it up was a B40 on flop. He went 30, okay. but I can just change it to, to 40%. Uh, most of it just being stack depth and the board being connected, yep. where if under the gun is playing uh, relatively reasonably, uh, actually they have some leads, I think. No, they don't. Not anymore. When you go 40. But <clears throat> the idea being like they have a lot of this connect e pair plus stuff where you don't want to go too big, where we have kind of a disadvantage in the range that, that we have for the, the 7X and the, and the 9X. Where we see for under the gun, they have some uh, some seven x down here. They have some nine x as well, and some pair pluses. So we don't want to go too big, as four liners are still kind of annoying. So we just go forty and force them to do something. Mm. Note the amount of checkbacks as well, too. Like we don't just get the auto c back because we have over over pairs and they don't. Yeah, all the it, over pairs check back at some frequency. His specific hand jacks is, is betting. Uh, depending on the suits, so black jacks being spade club mostly checks back, and that's just because you block jack ten suited twice. Yep. Where with the other jacks, you don't as right. much. Like jack of diamonds, you want to bet a lot, um, I imagine. So, And also the club, you want to check back because if you have a club, it makes it more likely they have a backdoor flush draw on the board. So in the, in the specific um, hand history, he did not give the suits. He just said it was rainbow. So obviously that no, could change, but I'm glad you pointed that yeah, out. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's an important concept. <clears throat> like when we right. bet 40% and we see what out of position should be check raising. We'll see that they have a lot of backdoor draws like mm-hmm. ace jack. Yeah, this is where ace queen. This is where uh, it's important to understand that like when over pairs check at some frequency, it's going to be suit dependent. Generally, like you're going to see splits like what you see with the jacks where it's like one half of the the subset pure bets and then the other half. Can you highlight the jacks checks. real quick, Landon, please? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Right. So it's like just pretty clear the way that it it diverges. It wants to bucket here. Yeah. If you have the jack of diamonds, you just get the bet. Yep. And then like when you have the 10 of clubs, you want to bet more like for you, for your sets because you don't block back doors, uh, back doors right. or that can check raise you. Yep. Same idea with aces, right? Aces, you want a club so they can raise with 
ace queen or ace jack of the suit on the, on the board. Right. Uh, call, honestly, I didn't learn like suit stuff until like probably at least in this detail, probably in, like earlier this year. Mm. It's it's tough to kind of look at this and be like, oh, like why? I think what what and clicked then, for me was seeing like <clears throat> uh, the way that these rainbow boards operate differently than two tone. Um, so like you know, without looking, I. Maybe it's the same because it's B40, but like generally you get like, a t say this is a single race pot. Mm -hmm. You would have like 10, eight, six, uh, maybe go like B40 or B66 uh, when it's rainbow. But whenever it's uh, two tone, you might just go like B25, right? Because the board gets scary. They have more continues. Well, you also, can also you, get value. Also, you just get like an entire subsection of the range to auto fold because it has no back door. Right, so yeah. it's like the triple Rainbow back boards, obviously, way more back doors. Yeah, the triple back door Crazy. that was whenever it clicked for me, like suit wise. Oh, we have to be like a lot Rainbow more conscientious. Board, big bet, flush draw, small bet. Yeah, they have more snap, and it's the exact small... opposite of the intuition that most people, right? right. It's like, oh, think... the flush draw, and then no, oh, the flush can get there, like right. let's bet bigger and scare right. them. But it's like right. they're gonna call it the flush draw, anyways, buddy, mm -hmm. right? And like that's your point here that I think is should be very well received. The reason why we don't go larger than 40 here is because it can one line on the turn. Note right? the king 10 suited, like of clubs, pure track back. Right, like it just—it's just too nasty. Board gets really bad. We have bad suits. Don't want to get check raised by Ace Jack, where they can turn equity and then barrel. So we want—we want to check back when we have the clubs in our hand. Uh, so, fun suit lesson that we have here for you today. Mm -hmm. So bet, call, turn is the four of clubs. Yeah. So now this is the theory. This is theory versus this is a custom half. So now we see here that turn is like a pot size bet for us where now we polarize and we mm. choose to go for value with our strongest over pairs. We don't want to bet jacks very much unless uh, we have the jack of clubs now, it looks like. <coughs> Partly because they have more of those back doors that yeah. check called, as you could remember from flop, ace jack is mixing on mm -hmm. the flop as a check raise. So if they don't check raise it, now they have a check fold and we, uh, we unblock those. And then it's also your weakest over pair that doesn't do much for suit blocks as well as they have jacks in their range too. So when you have two jacks, they probably don't have those. So Queens plus is going to be our value. Ace 10 is a nice one because we block top set mm -hmm. and we block, uh, I don't think they have 10, eight anyways, but we also have like call it two pair outs. If they do somehow have an over pair here, we, that we block the trapped record. aces too. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it, which doesn't exist in theory, but in practice versus this guy, potentially who knows. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they might just check race. Well. So for our bluffs here, we want to use uh, like a seven that uh, we don't want hearts, and I guess it's because we want to block seven eight suited because that's going to continue for them a lot. Like a seven of hearts doesn't block the eight of hearts on the board, and then we're also going to want to have some over cards with equity, like queen jack, king queen is a nice one, and then uh, some ace queens as well with the ace of clubs. Because once again, if we have ace queen with the ace of clubs. They have the nut backdoor draws that now that have to missed. fold. Yeah. As well as a ace king for him that's going to call the flop and then fold the turn versus pot. But in our in a, in custom world, we went uh, for this half pot bet, and we can see here uh, we're betting kind of the same range, but now we're checking back some of the over pairs because we need to protect it if we're going B50 instead of B100, and we just kind of protect with the aces traps. And then we start bluffing with the same combos, like relatively purish as well. Called the the queen, the queen jacks is still going to be in there. Jack still wants king to check jack. back a lot. Yeah, jacks is just very, very scared um, for the same reasons that we talked about earlier. And now you don't want to bet ace queen anymore because you're not really getting much as much fold equity right. as you would before. So in this solve, we go B50, and now they have some raises, but not jams. Jam is just kind of too much money, and there's also no real Bluff jam for this size. Just because you're risking a lot. There's no flush draw that can scare you. The four liner is kind of better for you than it is for the you know, the guy that's betting twice. So like queen jack, a nice hand to raise. You have equity. You can get him to fold some higher cards and and things along those lines. And ace, ace king for them has to call twice versus b50, which is kind of why ace wow. queen doesn't want to bet. Because mm -hmm. you still just get floated by ace king and then goes check check and you lose. But if you go pot, I imagine, uh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Go back. <laughs> no, no. Don't run away. Uh, so now if we bet pot, we'll see the ace king is out. Yeah. And that's good for us when we have ace queen and we're bluffing. Yeah. Not good in the other way. 
So we bend, he jams, and when we look at the machine, the machine's kind of indifferent on the turn, just because jam doesn't really exist. Uh, but then Jax, and this is kind of the practical idea where like Ace-10, kind of annoying, but like Jax gonna call a little bit more. Where like in practice, if we think that someone might just like protect jam Ace-10 too much, like we see here, Ace-10 will never do that. It will just call and play bluff catcher. But if we uh, potentially change some 10x to jamming, uh, the logical response would be that Jax plus has to call because how, when you beat value, you can't fold. How does it look if we... Oh, you do have the B50 on the turn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought this was versus pot. No, this is the pot how, sim. Okay, then, yeah. How does it look... Uh, how's our response if we bet pot on the turn and get jammed on? So now we see if we bet pot, he does have some jams with some hands that need protection value and kind of merge, like 10-9 suited, kind of mm. like... Meg, like not kind of really like where we thought it would come from. The 10-9, the 7-6, the 8-7s. Right. Sliver of ace-10. Yeah. So now if they jam... Like ace-10, yeah. It's just like, but like you just call... Yeah, see, now pairs. we just have pure calls. This, this is what I, I, I... This is what I think is happening is that the out-of-position player is just ignoring the size and yeah. just jamming the range that is intuitive to jam mm -hmm. uh, regardless of the fact that we bet 50% yeah. instead of 100. Yeah, if you're when you're playing... Like, yeah, for sure, in practice, no in board. live events... No, your Ford was terrible. <laughs> he just types oh so my phone wasn't terrible no it was, it was, it was yeah bad. well the thing is is that like <laughs> icky but like when you're playing you know in practice like a lot of times they're, they're gonna see you make that bet on the turn and they're, they're not gonna like think like well if he bet pot i'm not gonna fall i'm not gonna shove but since he bet you know 200 it's kind of the like, other way around the, i would right. imagine yeah, where the smaller bet's somebody like, bets oh pot, fuck this guy yeah. if somebody bets yeah. pot they're like oh he's not gonna fold if i go all in right but if he bets 50 and thinks oh man like this guy could have ace king so exactly. he might be able to find a fold on the on the turn yeah. and i mean look what nines nines calls yeah you have yeah. equity you have pair plus you have uh, pot and even betting nines on the turn like pretty it just doesn't happen very often but yeah like it happens when you have good suit blocks like you block the 10 nines yeah uh, that's nice for you yeah but in most of most of the time you're just gonna check back and because nines benefits a lot here like you bet pot and then you just see that the under the gun player starts folding all these high cards mm -hmm. really nice you know really 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 nice stuff and you still get called by some more sometimes too like seven six six five uh, five four i mean yeah you also get hands like ace nine to fold which is nice you're denying a fair amount of equity there yep you also get queen 10 to fold sometimes because yeah. just calling down is nasty. Yep. Sometimes you, and then you also have a good hand when a straight comes sometimes. Right. It's not just Very a, important. It's not just a, like when you have ace seven or whatever. Yeah, I think intuitively people would rather bet ace nine and check nines. Uh, and you can see that it's like pretty much evenly split. You want the over card out. Well, it's it's suit dependent for the right, ace nine. Right, like fair. you just don't want to unblock the back doors that check call, check fold. Yep. But when you have nines, you're like, I want to block 10 nines. So it's like less likely. Right, right. You can find more bets. Out of business value. Yeah. And if I get called, I can still win. Where with ace nine, you can win with an ace on the end. But you can't do that if you bet and then get jammed on. Because now, like nines, you can bet call if you get jammed on for this size. Mm -hmm. Where if you get jammed on now, you have to ace fold. Nine, yeah. You're exactly. like, oh, like that's no problem. You right, know? yeah. So yeah, that's where we're at. Okay. I think the, the turn size kind of makes everything a little bit... in Like... It ruins the constraint of what we're trying to have happen here. Yeah, the whole hand becomes a bit of an emotional hedge. And I think that the the wizard here uh, kind of demonstrates a lot of those principles that I was speaking to. It's nice to have good sizes on the turn, yeah. Good sizes are important, but also uh, understanding your purpose is uh, quite important as well. <laughs> understanding your purpose. Well, Life uh, lesson. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know, if you're just betting freely because it's like, oh, overpair bet. That kind of thing like that that's not going to function like we could see the jacks were a high frequency check back uh unless it was actually the suit that he had spade club um in which case now you know you get the bet a little bit more because you you block the the uh or you unblock the potential floats and then folds but uh or the jack 10 suited but uh the other thing is then to not lose vision over your opponent's range you can't just immediately assign him queens plus Right, like right. That, that, mm -hmm. that, those hands have less incentive to check jam, you know. Or they check raise flop at a frequency. Exactly. They don't just be like, oh, like sneaky, sneaky. Here's a turn. Like I'm all in now. Right, like <laughs> oh, he bet half pot. I'm just gonna jam for three hundred percent because I have middle set. It's like, yeah, maybe that happens sometimes, but like that's a pretty big error also. It's mm -hmm. mildly. It's like that's their problem, and they got right. lucky that they ran into the your top end portion for yeah. you and that sucks for you yeah mm -hmm. and, and then additionally it's like well if they are jamming sets there it's because they think that you only have over pairs when you bet half pot 
and that's a problem in and of itself. So now you should have other hands that right. can bet fold. I, I think I think all in all, the takeaway here is very similar to what I was uh, initially alluding to, which is understanding the 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 way that each of our ranges are constructed and what they're incentivized to do when we feel a little bit uncomfortable targeting portions of our opponent's range that we think may not be uh, as densely constructed as it should be in theory, then we check a little bit more. And turn it's is a polar spot for the imposition player. So what size do you want to choose? You right, like to... betting twice here, period, is polar. You You're not linear yeah. anymore. You don't have like ace queen, <clears throat> Yeah. you know? You don't want to choose like a merged size with a polar range. Right. And that's kind of the benefit you have as three betting where you have queens plus ace, like queens plus, and then yeah. things along those lines. And sure, they can have some sets here and there, but if you look back at the flop, he's going to check raise you a lot too. Yeah. So when they check calls, it's not as likely they have sets because they should be fast playing that, that's the flop. A, that's an important concept, I think, is understanding when hands are supposed to exit your opponent's range, right? Like, just because sometimes they show up with a set on the turn through a line doesn't mean that like a it's... a sneaky call. Yeah, it doesn't mean that it's there at the concentration that you're giving them. Yeah, I think people forget to eliminate good hands... Um, Further on down the hand, like like on the turn and river, yeah. they forget that they they eliminate the bad hands. They're like, oh, they fold those out, but they forget that like, oh, they probably don't have these hands either because they would have showed more aggression earlier. Right. So they they just keep those good hands in their range when right. they're probably not there. Yeah. Well, just Kings part, probably yeah. not trapping all that often for out of position. Or but, if they are, know. they're gonna check raise the flop. They're that, gonna well, find... that's what I'm saying. Like through right. th through three streets, Kings not often trapping here. So right. like right. not a hand we really need to concern. <laughs> There's a lot of mm -hmm. discipline to be had there, where it's like, okay, I'm gonna set the trap, and then I have to also be concerned when the ace comes. Yeah. Right. Like when but, you have queens here and you you're setting the trap, yeah. like a king can come, I, and I, the ace I, can come. I do understand why that that is the case though, because. You know, a lot of the player pool likes to like slow play big yeah, hands. Yeah, of course. Right? Of course. They they slow. You know, but like you notice that that's why when when it goes check call check raise turn, it's just like oh that's the nuts, mm -hmm. right? Like because a lot of times it just is because people right. don't know how to play their good hands any other the way. The delayed check raise is for sure anyway. a thing, right? But the delayed check jam, I think, is a little bit different when you're talking about so many plot pots, right? Here, basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I'm just looking through the node where we have pot in the turn and they call for the call theory sizes and the mm -hmm. river is an offsuit deuce and we jam for call it B55 with mm -hmm. our range being ace 10 out of mix, right? Depending on the suits, jacks plus. Uh, we see here that under the gun still has queens at a frequency and mostly is going to call us. But if you have jacks and go bet, bet, jam when you don't check the turn and get called like sometimes you're allowed to value cut yourself versus these queens because you're just getting called by this 10x portion enough of the time right and you just can't be worried about the times where they have the slow played pocket eights that happens i think the big thing ever, is you just can't be worried ever. about losing right like I, that, that's what this really boils down to is people want to make the hero fold because it's it's more comfortable than just like paying uh but you got to just pay bro <laughs> get out there and pay there it is that's instead of the wizard coming up, we just that's coming. That's up. right. Do just we pay. do we have a wizard result? Did I miss it? Uh, I don't know. What, what is it? Oh, well, well, we have one. Are you, are, you, are you following along? Oh, I'm definitely <laughs> following. Along. But, Project but, me, but, daddy. But, but what we're talking about is his fold on the turn, right? And the machine said that his fold wasn't all that bad, right? No, it was bad if he bets a correct correct size. <laughs> It's not bad for whenever he B50s, but we think that like the response is probably going to be similar to regardless of what size he chooses. Sorry, Bork. Yeah, he, he lobbied for you, but uh, you're going to get the X. Uh, if you guys would like to submit your own in the muck, head on over to our Discord channel. Don't forget, uh, you can find that in the pinned tweet at solve for YTV on Twitter. Or you can hit a hashtag Discord in the chat. Also, don't forget, if you guys would like to uh, get a subscription to Wizard AI yourself, hit hashtag Wizard in the chat. It'll give you a, uh, a link to follow. What are those called? Affiliate links. That's the word I was looking Affiliate. for. We appreciate it. If, uh, if you guys, you know, use our link. That's all. Um, yeah, that's going to do it for, for In the Muck this week. Sorry, Borg. We respect you for submitting. Well, not this week, just today. Sorry, just today. <laughs> we got right. more to come. Plenty this week. more in the muck to come. Speaking of in the muck, uh, Bally's yesterday. That was Bally. Bally. Oh. <laughs> Fucking... Bally. La, 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 la. Higher, 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 lower, higher. lower. <laughs> um, all right, so I got a lot of thoughts, uh, and I'm sure you guys do too. Um, let me just talk about what 
the overall experience was before I give uh, a lot of my feedback. Because uh, I think I have both positive and negative criticisms. And uh, I'm going to try to give it a uh, a little compliment sandwich if possible. <laughs> I'm learning, you know. Um, all right. So uh, the lineup yesterday was incredible. We played double the stakes that was advertised, which was even better. It's always nice. Uh, so we showed up. We were eight-handed. Well, seven-handed to start, nine-handed by the time Curtis got there. Uh, played 50, 100, 200 pretty much the entire time. The room was a buzz. Honestly, the the space that they have set aside for this set is incredible. Um, for anybody who's been to Commerce in the past 15, 20 years, whatever, there used to be a stadium bar or stadium uh, restaurant in between the high and low section. Uh, they got that entire space now for this studio. And it's remarkable. Like um, They have a, a glass window overlooking the floor. Which, you know, the commerce isn't exactly the most sightly place, but it's kind of cool that people like walk by and there were literally guys with like their nose pressed against the glass, like staring in, which was pretty dope. Um, the room is big. Probably if I had to guess, just ballparking it a thousand square feet, give or take, maybe even a little bit more, 1200, 1500. I'm not sure. Um, but it's, it's rather spacious. Uh, and I think that that's important because when you're talking about these live streams, that's an asset that most of them don't have. Only Poker Go really has a full studio space where they're able to, you know, create a stage and an entire uh, set design. Um, what this should allow moving forward for Bally is the ability to demonstrate depth in their shots. Uh, I think one of the biggest criticisms that they've received in the past, and not just them, um, this is probably like the one area where uh, Hustler does a good job of doing the best that they can to work around it, but they don't have a ton of dedicated space to their set either. And so what ends up happening is you rely on a bunch of tight shots to show the action, which is is fine when you're profiling players and stuff. But when you lack the establishing shot, it's similar to this podcast. You know, no, none of you guys at home really know what this studio looks like outside right. of the five minute countdown. Mm -hmm. So there's never really an establishing shot of like what's taking place to fill in your mind's eye so that you could be like a member in the audience, so to speak. And having a large set like this with a lot of depth, that should allow for more establishing shots, right? Like they should be able to take that bird's eye view shot. You should be able to get that shot that is, you know, kind of far away from the table that uh, displays everything that's going on. And it should be your hero shot. Um, you know, it should look beautiful. You should be able to dress it up in such a way that uh, it, it's, it's a breath of fresh air whenever we get to see that shot, you know. Um, for us at the Academy, like the hero shot is the overhead <coughs> where you get the, the full display of mm -hmm. the logo, the felt, the stuff like that. But... Um, you know, I think a good example of this is uh, the way that Pigtails films Poker Out Loud. And also, for what it's worth, it's similar to how Ryan does um, Hustler in that they have like that roving cameraman. And he takes care of a lot of the B-roll-ish type of shots that, you know, kind of make it a little bit more cinema, uh, cinemagraphic. You know, you get a little bit more of a feel of what's taking place in the room. You you kind of understand the buzz that's yeah. taking place. Think about like the World Series of Poker, right? Like when the final table and then yeah. they, they, they show that sh cutaway that hero shot. shot yeah. That hero shot and then they come right in on right. somebody. Yeah, it's and to be fair, like Poker Go, WSOP, they have an entire... I uh, mean, yeah. Yeah, they, they have an entire jib. You know, mm -hmm. they, they have like a lot of equipment mm -hmm. that, you know, these pop-up streams aren't necessarily going to have, but... You know, let's not forget that this whole thing is backed by Bally, the company. You know, this isn't uh, a bootstrapped startup that, you know, a couple guys are, are running, which for what it's worth, that's who they're competing with. And I think that they should bear that in mind, right? Like at the end of the day, you need to lean into your resources and assets to outflank somebody that's doing it with less. And I don't think anybody would ever question how much less uh, from the financial resource part Hustler's operating with. You know, they, they have a dedicated space, but it's very small. Uh, they certainly don't have a major corporation bankrolling them. Um, and they have a very small team. So, you know, the product that they're able to put out is through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And I think that that's worth acknowledging. Uh, 
this is kind of like where my criticism I would like to see Bally's do better um I don't before I give my I guess before I give mine I'd like to hear what your guys' thoughts were on the entire I know Conrad watched the whole thing yeah I mean um did you catch the end or did you uh not go to the app <laughs> nah they got me I was cooking oh, okay. they, I was cooking so I Good. went okay. over there I was like alright whatever um I alright so there's just a lot of things that need to be tweaked you know like yeah. First off, in the beginning of the stream, what the fuck was it? It was a ribbon cut. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> All right, cool. There was a ribbon cutting. Um, I it don't was... know. There was just a lot of things that needed to be tweaked. Cameras were out of focus. Like, I don't know. Well, it, I, all right, so it's the first stream. Like, yeah. do you forgive that? You know, it's. Yeah, it's... no, of course. Like, you know, they got to do better. They just, it, over time, it's just built out a better product. And, um, yeah. So I, I think this is a good example of what they're using as, as their establishing shot or their hero shot. And you could see, like, you guys have no idea how big that space is. It probably, small. probably looks very small, right? That was a choice. Like, they have this giant space and then they built this pen <laughs> that is, like, you know, like 400 square feet maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's literally, like, the size of a table plus one. Yeah, it's just it's also just really dark. Why are we so dark? Why is everything black? And yeah, it's just <laughs> funny because like, all right, you know what? You want it to be this dark? That's fine. But you make sure that everybody has a light colored shirt on, like Han. I don't think it matters. Well, I mean, Han looked pretty good. Like you see it. It um, matters some. Some. Barry looks decent with everybody his gray on. Yeah. Like there was just anybody wearing black. Well, it just matters that you look worse dark. But you just blend. Yeah. You just blend into the background. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just I I don't like the black honestly. Okay. There's the blacks a lot. All right. Um, so, uh, any any other particular points that you have? You know, I'd go on and then I'll come I, back. I kind of want to cook a little. All right. Uh, <laughs> he wants it. <laughs> so I want to, I want to, I want to start by saying like Wayne did an amazing job. That lineup was so fucking good. That was a good lineup. And I know the viewers at home probably don't feel that way, <clears throat> but I promise you, if you got to watch that lineup five days a week, you would be entertained. Like it's a really good lineup. There's a lot of different characters there. Half the table was drinking. The other half of the table was winning. Uh, that's usually a good mix um han was just berating people because they were talking in the middle of a hand like there was a lot of a lot of subtle nuances that would eventually lead to good tv if you can get these characters in the same room over and over again and personally from my perspective i don't know who wouldn't want to play that game like it's just a very good game where there's a lot of gamble a lot of action and everybody can at least have the perception that they're winning, which is really important when you're running a seven, eight, nine handed game. The right? game was amazing, man. The lineup was really good. Shout out to Curtis Meeks out there. Bro. <laughs> that was my first time playing with Curtis. He's fun. Yeah, like he was fuck, we had to gamble. <laughs> yeah. That's my dude. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm man, here to gamble, man. Yeah, he was he was fun. Um uh, yeah, the lineup was actually really good. Uh, fuck, Jew did some wild shit. Jew's on one. <laughs> Jew did some wild he fucks around. shit. Mm -hmm. He man. fucks around. Han fucks around. Uh, L fucks around for yeah. sure. Everybody, the, everybody in the lineup fucks around. Like, Curtis it, fucked around. It would have been. Berkey really fucks really around. Good game. You get you get like, <laughs> uh, you get Hicks on two bottles of wine. He's he's finding out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like card distribution didn't allow the game to go off, but it's. Easily can go off every every. Time so that that, that would be my one criticism of the lineup, uh, and it might not be Wayne's fault, but five hours isn't long enough in my opinion, right? Like they, the one thing with Bally Live is that there's like this weird agreement that the second the cameras turn off, the game breaks always, always, and it's like if that's gonna be the case, you should just start to condition these players to wanting to play a little bit longer and curate a list, mm -hmm. right? Like if Han has to go to dinner and wants to quit after five hours on the dot fill it yeah. somebody else will come in that seat like yeah. it'll be good you know or don't fill it let's play eight-handed now seven-handed whatever but are, like are you asking for longer streams 
Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. That's what I thought. Uh, especially when you're trying to compete. I think that that's exactly what you should be aiming for is like something between the six and eight hour mark. I think it's the only way to compete. You have to have longer streams because you just need more airtime. You need people to get more air, uh, eyeballs. And like you just need to be able to create bigger situations. Right. Like you get, you create. These yeah, you bigger, want more viral hands. Like if somebody was on the mic saying there's 250 on the table right now, but by, we're hoping for 500. We're hoping for a million. Well, then the game needs to go on exactly. for that to happen. Precisely. Like you can't just, it's not just gonna you know whatever I need, I totally agree people need to get stuck people need to win i i, I couldn't agree people need more. to make phone calls can you bring me cash like right. it has to be you know <laughs> like, it's gotta happen man yeah unless you plan for the game to be that yeah. big you know you have to let it go on yeah and uh, and for what it's worth i think these stakes are great like 51 2 or just doing one two uh on its own i think that's the sweet spot 200 400 like prices some people out like that lineup was great because there were like three people that wanted to play 50 100 mm -hmm. And like five people that wanted to play 100 to, or 200, 400. Okay. And so like when you get that nice mix, what happens is the guys who want to play two four are playing too loose. The guys who play, want to play fifty one maybe playing a little bit tighter, but like it's not so far out of their comfort that they yeah. care. Yeah, they're kind of comfortable. It's just like whatever. Right. But and, and everybody's in a splash um, that wants to play two four. So like yeah, that's what kind of happened. But there was just no. The card distribution kind of sucked. Yeah, but it, that's a byproduct of it just not running that long, right? Like, yeah, it, was, I guess. it was like five hours on the dot and. Well, and then the other aspect of it, why why that was the case. Uh, and now I'll get into some of my criticisms. <laughs> I've never been so frustrated on a stream before in my entire life based off of simple mechanics that they've had a year to iron out. Okay. I don't know how you go live after being, after being dark for a year and have three dealers and, and no offense to these dealers they tried their hardest and they were put into an awful situation i don't blame them one bit okay was not their fault this is an upper management problem talk your shit these dealers could not get out more than eight hands a half that's painful <laughs> they, we had to get rid of the action clock because they just clearly had no experience with it ever um at some point we went to a hand shuffle and it looked like they had never hand shuffled before. Well, you really didn't need the action clock with my man fucking Turbo out there. No, nah, there was plenty of times where like <laughs> nah. the action clock would have been really helpful. Han would have definitely could have used the yeah, action clock. for sure. All, the whole game. For sure. But my man Turbo, he lives up to his name. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> um, so like just mechanically speaking, I think there were a lot of problems that can be corrected and will hopefully be corrected. But... Here, here's my issue top to bottom number one we're paying two hundred dollars a half okay okay so you have to give us the best dealers in the place for, for a second i thought you meant each but that can't be true no no no, <laughs> no totally. but like this for, is yeah, this, this is lot. private game rake like right. this is what we pay at bellagio to have a private game with like good dealers right you have to give us the best dealers period like end of story <clears throat> we're paying way too much in rake mm -hmm. and we're you know filling your stream um Secondarily, they have to be able to function the action clock. Third, you have to have the, the shuffling machine work. Like, hand shuffling is just way too goddamn slow. Um, or just have dealers that can hand shuffle. It, it does, it's just still too slow. Like, sure, if, yeah. the, if, the, if the machine's broke, fine. Like, whatever. But, like, you have to have a deck mate there running. And, you know, if it doesn't work, change it out. Yeah. Um, I think that the other problems that came about that i worry aren't as fixable um the set's a choice like this is just a choice that they've made and i fear that uh whoever's vision for what bally live is it's a poor one because those shots are tight they're dark the room like i said uh, i wish you guys could like see it from the the vantage point of like how spacious this room could be and they just build this like weird hockey arena type of thing. I guess to get the, like, how much do you need to advertise your own stream on your stream? Well, it's even funny because like, it looks like if you, <laughs> if you push that back like a little bit, it would probably look really good. No, it wouldn't. What do you mean? It just would not Outside look good. Outside of colors. No, well, the, the colors are what make it look poor, but even, even still, why do you need a false wall? There are already four walls in the room, right? Like... Just do whatever you want to do to the walls. And even cooler that you can't see is on the one side, or actually on both sides. This is, this is actually the dopest thing of all about their set that they don't take advantage of. It's sunken. Okay. So on both sides, it's stadium seating. 
right? So against the walls uh, to the outer edges, it's like stadium seating because it used to be a restaurant. So the table's like where the bar and all that stuff is, right? And it's this sunken in, like already curated stage. And they chose to just eliminate that entire optic for black banners, gotcha. right? So this is a choice and one that I just don't think anybody who is in the viewing public agrees with. It's dark, it's gloomy. It, the, the reason to use like black backdrops is when you're in a very small space to create the illusion of depth, right? They just actually have depth. Look at this. That is <laughs> an establishing shot. That's what a beautiful set looks like. Like, I know that Bally is putting money into this. Yeah. Just do the walls. Like, that PCA set, for what it's worth, um, if that's what it was, or EPT, oh, whatever. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was the PCA. When we were there, I don't think people realized, like, the backdrop was beautiful. And you walk up to it, and it's just a fucking cloth curtain. <clears throat> it's just a cloth curtain that they put, like, their trophy on, their their logos on, right? And, like, yeah, it was it was black at its core, but it had endless colors yeah, on it eye popping colors and it was all the way across the room in a 10,000 square foot uh arena or whatever you want to call it a, a, a convention center right yeah. when you have less space to work with you just want to be able to brighten things up and make the shots pop and the shots can just never pop when it's black on black on black on black, every fucking color there is black and red. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that they had their fingers on look, was black sick. and red. Yeah, that's so dope. Look at right? that. Now look, the, the shot is on a jib. It, it's, it's clearly very spacious. Right. But I'm telling you, they have this much space. They have this much space in that arena. They just don't use it. And they actually not only don't use it, but they eliminated it. They created a closed set within a closed set to make the space smaller. And they just recreated what they had at the bike. And I don't, for the life of me, understand that choice. And we have to be abundantly clear like who I'm criticizing here. This is not Wayne. This is not any of the production, I don't believe. I think this is like, you know, upper management in Bali that is making some sort of aesthetic choice. But it is a ridiculously poor one. And we're about to see Bally Live move from the Tropicana because it's getting torn down. So wherever the fuck they land, I hope someone has half a brain <laughs> to say to themselves, enough with the goddamn black. Here's another great example. Uh, the PokerGo studio, like where they keep the main, the main table, that stage area is no larger than the set that they're working with at Commerce. They do a fantastic job. Yeah, it costs money to build a set. But like... You know, when they build out the Bally's Live at, uh, at, at the bike, I was told that was a half a million dollar set. There's no fucking way you can't recreate something like this for <clears throat> the same price. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Pay give me. Give me right. a half a million. I'll find it. I mean, minus the LED. That's what I was about to say. That LED screen yeah. in the background. Okay, is... minus the LED TV in the background. But like, whatever, man. Just put a fucking, you know, a well-designed banner up there. Like, there are so many things you can do to make it aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't need to be motion graphics. It doesn't need to be the fucking clock countdown or any of it. Just make I think, it I think the look win, good. I think the win is a very good example. Of exactly. That. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It that looked right. really clean. That it is literally like, just a yeah. WPT fucking tarp. Yeah, it's like that or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's a hero banner, right? Like yeah. it, it's everything that the user wants to see. You feel in the arena you know you yeah, felt it's, part it's, of it it's very inviting like it's, right that site that was like very it's blue and white it's yeah it's like everything pops and just, yeah, yeah look at that yeah. But that 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 is definitely doable now again like the leds behind uh the 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 two and the eight or the three and the seven whatever wait that's a little bit more what is that graphic that is that is an alley. That is yeah, that's not. Banner. It's not just a band. It's not just no, a tarp that's behind be, it. That's behind the three seat and the seven. No, seat. no, no. The no. actual the actual thing was had LED lights going up at two. But but your point is still valid that uh, you can do you whether can do it, whether it, it is or it isn't. Right. It doesn't need to be. Right. Um. The sure. the whole thing is that like this is a choice. Mm -hmm. Everything about this is a choice. And here's the other thing that I have a huge huge problem with. Like to the point where when the dealing when the dealing staff couldn't do their job well, I genuinely considered just leaving. Like I was stuck 30K. Eric Hicks started like complaining really, really loudly in a very, uh, 
I didn't agree with the way he complained. Like I stepped away from the table and I talked to Wayne and I said, listen, like we have to take the action clock away because they're only using it 10% of the time. And it's very unfair to the person who they actually do use it for, you know, like you get put into a decision. Suddenly we haven't been using the action clock for 20 <laughs> minutes and now you have 30 seconds, right? It's just very unfair. So he, he very quietly obliged, took the action clock away. Uh, and that's obviously like the best way to handle these things because these dealers are trying. They're, they're not, they were the one thrust into his, an impossible situation. I'm sure they didn't volunteer, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not their fault. Eric was like very uh, outspoken, basically saying like, you know, in front of the dealers, get somebody competent in here. And I get it. Uh, it's frustrating. He and I were both buried. It feels bad to not see any fucking hands. Yeah, that, that's pretty stuck. fucked up. Like, no, of just, course. Just like, dude, totally didn't agree. On. Yeah, totally didn't agree with yeah, what, the he, way that he went about it. You put him in his place. You definitely corrected him. Uh, I, I, I mean, I corrected him a little bit. So did Turbo. But like the bigger point is that he's not wrong. Yeah, no, of course. Right? He has a very legitimate gripe. And uh, it, was, it was all compounding from the entire experience, which was we started three hours late when we were told to be there at a certain time. There was this big, giant, masturbatory dog and pony show prior that none of us volunteered for, and nobody understands what the fuck they were trying to accomplish with. <laughs> like, this ribbon cutting, and this gorgeous woman whose only interview question to me is, tell me a little about yourself. It's like, are we about to go on a date? Like, I, <laughs> You wish. I do, but that's beside the, that, that. I wish the question wasn't asked because it's a very awkward one. You wish the question was, would you go on a date with me? No. Like, <laughs> it was so cringe. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about yourself. I'm about to go play a fucking poker game. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> like, like, isn't this your job? It, yeah, like you. <laughs> I'm not doing your job for you, but no, like, it, it was just like, and again, it's not her fault. It's very clear she wasn't prepped. Right. Like she doesn't know anybody. She has no idea what the event is or what's going on here. It's just like, why on earth are all these corners being cut? Right? Like if you actually want to compete and you have the fucking resources to compete. It all looks so dark. It's so dark. Yeah. It's so LA. Not and put on. No, it's not. It's just so put on. Like, what what was the purpose of that? <laughs> right? It's like I had to do two lengthy <laughs> interviews yesterday. <laughs> why just why it's not LA without a step and repeat Burke I mean let's go uh, it, it, it's just step and repeat. yeah basically it was like okay who are you and what are you wearing it's like are we fucking doing this who right now who is your daddy and what does he do what were you wearing I don't know <laughs> something straight off of Instagram I don't know it looked nice it was a nice jacket I mean I just I just don't think that you can expect the people that you're relying on to put on the show to be these show ponies time and time and time again while you're putting out a shit product. And like, look, I hope that it gets better. I'm rooting for them. Like the blurry camera, that's an oversight that can get fixed. Yeah. Uh, the dealers, hopefully that can get corrected and things of that nature. But like, bro, you've had a year to launch. It looks like they just made the decision to go live 72 hours ago. <laughs> and like all of this stuff, everything was so like, the, the interview we did with that woman was so, like, they just thought of it right then and there. <laughs> they thought that that was going to be a cool intro. Like, nobody had done a dry run. Nobody had planned this out and thought to themselves, what is this going to look like? Yeah. You know what I mean? The ribbon cutting. They were deciding in the moment what the best version of the ribbon cutting was going to be. Should we have all the players sat at the table? Should we just have all the brass around and do it? It's like, first of all, maybe ask yourself why you're doing it at all. Like, who is this for? I you know mean, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, hats like, off to all what, the workers. What, yeah, fine. Applaud them, man. Don't do it on our time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we were 90 minutes late based off of this whole dog and pony show. Uh, there was additional, like, uh, people showed up late. Like, we didn't even have the full six. and We were supposed to start at two. I don't think we had the full six there till three. And then we didn't end up starting till, like, four. 4.30. I think we went till 9.30 which yeah. was five hours, so 4.30, right? Some of us are told to be there at one. It's just like, what are we doing, man? We can't be three and a half hours late. Yeah. Like, I'll never come on time if that's going to be the standard, <laughs> you know? Uh, and it's like, okay, so, so like you missed the mark on aesthetics. You missed the mark on, on mechanics. Uh, you missed the mark on, on timing. You nailed, you nailed the lineup. 
Lineup was fucking great. Lineup was great. The lineup was great. I, right? I didn't. It. I didn't hear the commentary, but I assumed the commentary was decent at a minimum. Um. Yeah. I mean, Jared is very good. I like. I like him on the mic. Yeah. Jared knows what he's doing. He's yeah. in the arena. Uh. I think that they still have audio problems somehow. Like this is their third iteration now of the live stream, and I still don't think that they found a way to find a good love balance with the players. Uh, and the chips and all that other stuff. And yeah, like here, uh, this is another thing. Like aesthetics matter so much. You can't have somebody interviewing you holding a fucking little tiny lav. Yeah. And stay like, yeah, that was bad. Get a mic or don't do it. Just don't fucking do, do it. it. Don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Less is more. Yeah. I, had, I, had I, a I big, agree with that. I had sure. a big don't do it moment. I was look, watching this. I was like, what the fuck is going on? There, there are so many people within these corporations and everything that are like clamoring for camera time more than us as players it's like dude just do an industry game like you guys can all just sit down and talk it out and enjoy yourself getting a little bit of shine like i I don't know man the original live at the bike for how mediocre the production quality was it was in the spirit of of a live produced cash game that was you know, the players first and foremost. You walked into the room and all the players that had been to the bike throughout the years, all the players that had been grinding in the LA scene, everyone that you've seen on TV, their their pictures are all over the wall. You know, it's like your first time there, you're like, this is really cool. I'm a part of something historic. This is the first ever live stream. Like, I hope to to make the wall at some point. It's like, yeah, the the walls were drab gray and, you know, they threw like a colored painting up there to to kind of pick things out and they were using fucking webcams from like 1997 <laughs> to to film the product but like for what they had it was it was good enough we can't deal with good enough anymore you know it's 2024 we're we're 20 years removed from the launch of live at the bike yeah. there are a dozen live streams out there half of which are just flipping a switch and rolling you can't be a part of a bally corporation that's worth a billion dollars and just like have all bunch of mediocrity yeah you know what i mean like i i just i i don't get it man i don't understand like i know what it's like to to run a startup company i get that i know what it's like to have to cut corners because we don't have resources i know what it's like to ask your marketing guy to be the graphic designer, to be the email marketing guy, to be the social media manager and to do all those things and wear all those hats and him not necessarily being capable of all that. I know what that's like. I don't get it whenever you're Bally's corporation though. Nah. You know, like if I had, if I had that many people working underneath me, if I had that many uh, resources available to me, I'd just dedicate that job to someone. I'd have a graphic designer. You I mean, we, and we, just and we even do. Yeah, you would just think <laughs> you know? that the, the product has, the standard has to be much much higher. Correct. Like, you know, like going into it, you just think the standard has to be much higher for absolutely everything. And, you know, it's, it's when it comes down to it, this is a big company behind it. It's, it's tough to not get the big things right. Mm-hmm. Right? Like missing on the little things, okay. You know, if we had to pay for food, I'd be like, oh, that's a miss, but like, you the know, horror. yeah, well, like, like we'll live time and timing. Yeah. If, if you, if, if, uh, if the stream had dropped, you know, it'd be like, oh, well that's shitty for you guys, but like, it'll be corrected in the past. That's a little thing. Yeah. If, uh, somebody no showed the stream or the lineup collapsed the way that it did when it was supposed to be 200, 400, we had to play smaller, which is what happened. Hey, that shit happens, man. You know, I forgive that. That's the little stuff, yeah. but like. I tried to watch the stream. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't bear it. I mean, it, it's just so unsightly. Yeah, it's the first hour was really hard to watch. It's so unsightly and it's so goddamn slow. Yeah, it's so goddamn slow. Yeah, there was really nothing. <clears throat> hey, what's wrong with that? In the first hour, <laughs> we we weren't seeing rivers and hands were taking six minutes. Right, it's just so slow. And the final thing, doubling down on like you've had a year to prep for this, somehow, this, this is what makes me think that they just decided like last week that they were going to go live. Somehow, 
they did not have compliance with the DOJ to add an ante, to run it twice, to play stand-up game, to play seven deuce, to play bomb pots. I mean, so like that's to double straddle. This is this is the thing that's just an oversight. Like that's fine. They'll get it no, in the future. No, I disagree with that. What do you mean? That to me demonstrates an entire lack of preparation. Yes, it is. But at the same time, it's just an oversight. Like it's. I thought it's the running too big it, of one. I thought the running it twice thing was what, kind of strange, considering it's your guys's money. Like, I don't, what is the DOJ? Just so you can. Uh, I don't. Drug? No, I don't Department know what it's Department, Department of Justice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you said DOJ, like they have to, they have to go through the DOJ. Apparently, that's who the to see oversight if you can run it is. Twice. So apparently, they don't have a gaming commission, of some sort in California. I, don't I thought know. they do. I, I think that they mm -hmm. do, but I don't know how much it oversees cards. Gotcha. I don't know. Honestly, like I'm just going off of what the floor person said. Yeah. Basically, yeah. there was some sort of entity that they had to go through. To they get had to get compliance to, for all right, these things. Right, And exactly. somehow, yeah. prior to the first stream, they did not have compliance for mm -hmm. any of these very, very simple things, I right? Mean, that's is it, is it possible this is what you were... Is it possible this is what you were told versus like maybe the graphics guy just doesn't know how no, to run it? No, 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 no. Because I knew ahead of time. Uh, I discussed it with Garrett and... You we, know what question I was going to ask though. Yeah, okay. it, it, it wasn't a lack of... Uh, it wasn't an inability in the back room. As far as I know, they have the entire production from Live at the Bike, which those guys are fantastic. Big shout out to Brian. He's like one of the best in the industry as far as I'm concerned. Um, no, it's not that at all. It, it's absolutely a compliance thing. And like... These guys want to fucking gamble. Curtis Meeks comes in, and he wants to double straddle, and they tell him no. Yeah, that was just wild. Like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know, Turbo's Turbo's trying to fire it off, and they're just like, "Stop it!" Yeah. It's like, uh, well, well, then we don't want to play on stream anymore. Take us out there where we can do these things. So uh, yeah, that that another thing doesn't make sense. Like you can't do it on. You can do it in the casino on the like in a regular game, but you can't do it. Well, on Well, there's the obviously stream. different rules for. For it being streamed, and they're going to scrutinize that a lot more. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like it's not going to pass. Obviously, they're going to get, uh, you know, compliance for all this right. stuff. It's just somehow, some way, in the last twelve months of them not of them being dark, yeah. they hadn't thought to get this compliance, or it hasn't gotten pushed through. I, I have no idea how mm -hmm. slow the wheels of justice are whenever it comes to to getting this stuff. All the loose ends were not. Oh tied wow. Up. Kiro yeah. actually just said, to be fair, you can't do it in the casino either. Mm. Can't do what? I'm guessing, I hope he's not talking about double straddle or like straddle. I guess you can't double straddle on, in the casino. I don't know if you can or can't, but you can definitely have an ante because they have an ante. You can definitely run it twice. You can definitely uh, yeah, play twice, bomb though. pots. You can for sure play stand up. Like all of those things you can do on the floor. Mm. At least according to all those guys who play commerce. Yeah. That's weird. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's... Or maybe they just... It's one of those things that, like, you know, it just happens. A lot of it, like the Seven Deuce game, the... Like, they don't have compliance for it, but they just do it. Maybe, because it's not televised. Yeah, it's just, like, people playing cards and, like, whatever. It's yeah, just, yeah, I mean, that could, that could be part of it. Um, I, I don't understand how that would be the case, though, if, obviously, at the bike you can do all these things. Yeah. Right? Like, it's overseen by the exact same governing body. So what's the difference? Yeah. Right? I, I don't understand. Maybe maybe there's uh something going on where um where some of this stuff isn't going to ever get accepted at commerce. But again, you knew that when you made the deal. Yeah. You know, like uh you, hamstringing yourself in very particular ways does not make it helpful. Um but like for me, it's just like look, there was a lot of things that I thought were great. I I I think that they treat the players remarkably well. We were well taken care of, which I think is very important. I think Wayne put together an amazing lineup. I think that uh, the loyalty to the Live at the Bike brand from the players is there. Like that lineup is very loyal to Wayne and to the bike, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I think that that's, that's the core to building out a good stream. A big part of that being Barry. Barry, uh, Eric, Eric L, X. for sure, yeah. Jew, Han, Turbo. Those guys, Eric Hicks, those guys are all very loyal to that brand. And they want, uh, JD, another one, they all want to see it succeed. But, you know, I can't be the only one who doesn't want to be, like, I almost didn't go because I didn't want to be attached to another failure. And I'm just a player. I have nothing to do with Live at the Bike. I have nothing to do with 
live at commerce. I have nothing to do with live at Trop, but I've played all of their relaunches. Mm-hmm. I played all three of their initial launches. And I feel like it's getting to a point where it's like my face is somehow synonymous with this failed Bally's brand. Uh, come on. That's, that's a reach. Is it? There are people, there are plenty of people who claim that I had a deal with them when they relaunched it live at the bike. I bet you if you had a deal, they w- you wouldn't let it flop like this. You're goddamn right. <laughs> You're goddamn right. Put me in charge of... of You'd be doing the memes, right? <laughs> I, I don't want anything to do with social media. I don't want anything to do with graphic design. I don't want anything to do with interviews. Hey, man, hire me. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, what are you talking about? Do it all. No, I, no. Just put him in charge of lighting. Let me oversee <laughs> all of it. Fine. Yeah, that's I'll what, manage it. Yeah, just take, I'll just manage say, everything. Look, look, just get the check, and then you figure out everything. Don't worry. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Like the amount of resources that are available and the way that they were divvied up was just like very much an oversight. What they got for having Eric person once a month, they could have gotten 20 regulars to play their game five days a week. Yeah, that's for sure. Easily, easily for the exact same price. That's for and sure. And you would have a game five days a week and that easily would now put you in competition with whoever it is you're trying to compete and, with. And some more money for production. Yeah. And left over. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and this is the thing. It's just like... Uh, <laughs> You want it to be plug and play. You're going to run three, four, five days a week. You just want it to be plug and play. And you want to make Wayne's job as easy as possible. Filling the lineups is the hardest fucking part. It's the hardest job by a country mile when it comes to putting together a good stream. You have to support that with good cameras, good aesthetics, good commentary, good graphics, good marketing, dealers, good dealers, reduced rate, good food. You, you have to support all of that. If you don't, it's a fool's errand to even try to put the lineup together. Why the fuck would any of us play on TV instead of just going and playing in a casino? Yeah. You just got to make, you got to make everybody comfortable. More That's than it. comfortable. Yeah. More than comfortable. You, you have to, you have to put people in a position to feel like it's a, positive experience mm-hmm. like it's Almost a, a worth privilege watch. To, yes to exactly on the, precisely on the yeah. right precisely mm-hmm. you don't, like, you don't I want can't wait to go there and and show this and 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 sh- and you know tweet it out to everybody because i want them to watch and right. like yeah that 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 excitement that it feels you like it's not there. right now right it's not there it feels like not even close <laughs> we're just streaming as a whole right like when's the last time you've actively tried to like promote a stream that you played on anytime i'm on poker go yeah that's or true. the wpt one Though, I mean, those are just like ridiculously professional, uh, well put together streams. E- well, the Hustler one, the the two times I played Hustler, it was Ivy Durr. Yeah, that was sick. Me, Garrett, mm-hmm. like the lineup was insane. That was cool. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, the the big events, People and like that. and to be quite honest, like moving forward, like that's probably what it's going to take to get me on stream. You know, it has to be high enough stakes. It has to be, like I would play yesterday's lineup five days a week. I was gonna say if it got put together, but there's no fucking way I would play it again under the setting that I played yesterday. It was too tilting. I mean, there was a lot of other things going on. Like you waited for three for fucking hours to start. You would fly there every single Friday. No, I wouldn't. No, I would not. <laughs> what? No, I wouldn't. I thought about it. If you were playing fifty one two, you would fly there every single Friday to I don't think I would. You just would. The lineup's too good. You no, just, I don't like, think I would. I have I have the same game here. It's Five hundred to eight hundred dollars round trip for me to fly with cash through JSX. So it's like you're talking fifty flights or a hundred flights a year. Now at like three hundred dollars on average. Okay. So now you're looking at thirty thousand dollars in flights, mm-hmm. right? To play fifty sessions. So I now have to outperform uh, a, a new one, rake. Yeah, a one k rake per session. Or 1K tax per session. You're playing a way... I'm only getting to play five hours. You're playing a way... You might say it's, it's the same game, but you're definitely playing a better game, right? But it's only 250 hours. Yeah. And it's slow as fuck, uh, so it's uh, actually only 200 hours. Yeah, I, I definitely... I mean, don't get me wrong. Let's... That was their first time. They, they, no, 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 no. All right. When I was going to Live at the Bike week over week, I thought about this as well. And by the time the, the stream had shut down, I had already made the decision I wasn't going back. But if there was, like, say there's no cap on the time of each game. Well, but there is. All right, but these are just things that need to be changed, you know? But, but like, they're not going to be changed because it's as much the player as it is the stream house. 
right? Like five or six hours is just what you generally get out of a stream game. So it's like, uh, that. that's just not enough. Like when I go to the Bellagio to play, I get to play eight hours on average. Yeah. And I get to play it, you know, 200 times a year. If it cost me, if it cost me a thousand dollars to play on live at the commerce every time that I want to play and I only get to play for five hours and it's taxing my entire, so it's five hours of gameplay, but it's like 18 hours of my life, 20 hours of my life, something like that. You can't have a win rate big enough. All right, fine. They'll give you 150K a year just for travel Booked. I mean, right. I, I, would, <laughs> I, I would be there and I would lie about how great of an experience it was. I would tell everybody they're idiots and they don't know how good black looks. It's very slimming. Uh, you do uh, ribbon cuttings every single episode. Every, every episode I would cut a ribbon. It's amazing what money can do. Well, it's way it? different when you're making three thousand just for showing up. Right, every every episode, as opposed to paying a thousand. Yeah, of course, yeah, it's a not, big fucking difference, no, man. Really different. just, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, th this turned into more of a more of a tangent than I, I expected it to. You did, Although you I don't did. know why. <laughs> I, I knew I was salty about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly. There's a lot of things they can do better. Um, and my my I, concern is not the things that they can do better because I agree with you. The the cameras will be in focus. The dealers will get better. The commentary will continually improve. The graphics will be sharper. All of that stuff is going to continue to get better. That's not my concern. My concern is all of the choices that they've made that are now set in stone. That set's not fucking changing. Right. They ain't tearing down any of those walls. I mean, they ain't painting any of them a different have, color. It couldn't have cost that much money to do some things. Move th some things around. I, I'm, I'm telling you that set will never change. I, I will bet. I'll lay you odds that wow. that set does not change in the next 18 months. 18 months? 18 months. 18 I'll months? I'll lay you two to one on whatever you want. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll, I'll take that bet for 100 bucks. There you go. Right, you got it. <laughs> uh, but wait, yeah. can I get some action? Yeah, you got, that's, when, I, when I say change, I mean physically change. I don't mean like, you know, the banner changes or I something like that. No, no, no. No, we're just gonna remind you every time. The structure. <laughs> yeah, the, that set will not structurally change in the next eighteen months. Mm. I'll bet it. I'll lay you two to one. Right. Well, that's that's pretty interesting because now we're just gonna come here, up here every <laughs> single week and we're gonna talk about how bad the set is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking. Someone's eventually gonna see the shit. I mean, like, here's right, the thing: fine. you might be making a good bet because. Uh, you know, in my mind, you just wouldn't launch until you had everything done set, the way you want. Set wanted. in stone, but right? like, but I, if they rush to launch for whatever reason, then yeah. like, yeah, maybe this was just a, a beta test or makeshift. a beta trial, right? Like, nothing about it's makeshift though. They physically built barriers. <laughs> I mean, like, I just don't think they're gonna have a construction crew in there tearing fucking walls down. Yeah, call me crazy. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong because I think that that space is beautiful. I think there's so much they could do with that space. Um, I would like to see like the bar area and like the th no, there's no bar area or anything like that. It's 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 um, I, I used the word before. What's it called? Uh, Stadium seating. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's uh, sunken. Yeah. Like where the table is is sunken. What's on like up top though? So up top on the on the far left side is like, I guess you could call it stadium seating. It's like uh, rows of of seating like ta high, high top tables okay uh and then on the other side is um like a lot of uh, maybe i guess you can call it production stuff uh there's okay. like that's where all the beverages and food is and stuff like that but it's all just like see yeah that that side that you can see uh behind the bally sign uh that looks nice like they made it colored and then it's uh, gone <laughs> uh, the the seating is all up there you can see it see it's sunken uh we're, we're spelled your name wrong I know, I saw that. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> That's a cherry uh, on top. Yeah. yeah. This, this, this is why I want to distance myself from, from people who are taking L's. Uh, <laughs> get one thing right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, That's the first time you saw that, isn't it? No, I saw Kev Math tweet about it yesterday. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, like the, the, the sunken nature of the space leaves a lot of room to be able to play creatively uh and i think that like whoever is in charge of and here's the thing like you can't blame houston he got fired and they've <laughs> continued to all three fucking sets look the same 
Why? Why? For that, that's the other thing that like blows my mind. You have three <laughs> different spaces that are all uniquely different, and you replicate the same set three times. Okay. Why? Kyro just said the other side is where the green room is being set up. The fuck do you need a green room for? <laughs> That's what I was about to Why say. do you need a green room? Whatever the answer to that is, stop. scrap it. Stop it now. Whatever the answer is, scrap it. No, it's interviews. a terrible idea. I'm never coming in the green room. You've heard it here first. I will never, never go in the green room. I was never. Pissed. Never. It's so old hat. The only reason why you'd want a green room is like for like a confessional or something yeah, like that. Yeah, fuck the confessional. They tried this for one episode yeah. on No Gamble, No Future. And the only horrible. person who went to it was Lynn because she's a camera hungry. <laughs> she's a camera hungry. <laughs> she's a camera hungry. <laughs> yeah. Scrap, uh, scrap choice choice words. the green room. Choice words. Uh, it's man. just like nobody who play. Like we're trying. You want us to have a good fucking show. Then you want us gambling. Period. Nobody wants to be a fucking monkey on a puppet string. Like, go talk to the camera now. Tell them how you feel about Eric Hicks berating the dealer. Like, I'll just do it at the fucking table. <laughs> this is the real world. This is true. <sighs> like, just lose that wall, man. Look how nice that looks in the background. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's lit. Yes. And you can turn like the fucking it. lights on. It's so dark, man. Yeah. I would it, just, like it, it. it has more depth. It face. looks like you guys are in a dungeon. I know. Like... <laughs> Even the floor is black. You just desperately black. want depth. Why does everything... like? It was like the entire set was built to be a NASCAR wall. <laughs> like, oh no, we got to get all the sponsorship out there. It's like, why? I mean, why? I'm sure you can find some other ways to do it with depth. All right. Kyra says the table's being updated and the set's being adjusted. The table being updated means nothing mm, to me. That has, uh -oh. that has nothing. Did I, did I make, did I make they made two, 200. <laughs> well, what do you believe adjusted means, Guapo? Uh, I mean, listen, you, you're apparently making the rules, so you tell me. I'm uh, saying I don't think matter. anything structurally is going to change. <laughs> you're the one making the Those rules. walls aren't fucking going anywhere. Kyra, if you get 50 bucks, if you make them change the room around. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'll give you half my money, buddy. <laughs> So that's the other thing, like, I agree with this. He says it's actually brighter in there than the settings appear, but it's not the settings, right? It's, it's that it doesn't translate the camera well. Like, yes, it is brighter in there. You can see it on my phone, but, like, not in a good way. It just, the, the lights when you're under them are, are quite bright, but it, it was the choice, you know, black does not reflect light. Yeah. That's, that's the rules. Them's the rules. You know? <laughs> There's like, nothing you can do about it, man. Yeah. You have to change some color somewhere. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I would have loved to have just came on here and just celebrated. Valley. I'm too fucking old for it, man. I will say they, they, they had a great game, though. The, the game, game was, was good. The game was amazing. The game was good. I managed to get out from Buried 30. Like, the game was great. Uh, Barry's the best. I fucking love playing with that guy. I know that I give him a lot of shit and people think that he might be a bit of a curmudgeon, but like he's such a joy and he makes, he makes the best out of any bad case scenario. Like the dealers are slow. He doesn't care. He tipped him. He's like, yeah, don't he worry about care. it. Like, he just, he's just good about everything. He has to be the easiest guy there to work with. And I think that's super critical for them moving forward. I, I just think like, look, I'm, I'm very unapologetic about giving these opinions because this space isn't new. You know, there isn't a lot of room to forgive people for making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And quite frankly, I don't think we have to. Yeah, it doesn't even matter because like these mistakes will either, they'll either build off from them or it's just going to bury them. They're going to bury themselves. Right. And, and the thing is, is that like, I don't want to... Like, this isn't me like creating a rival... Just like it was never me creating a rivalry against HCL. Right? Like, I had my criticism of them. No, that's because not I, true. You hate them. You hate all of them, Bert. Yes, that's... You, you got me. <laughs> I mean, you, if Fertucci's you, watching this, he's yeah, loving you right now. But, I mean, it's like, going back to the origins of what caused the grief between me and Vertucci was just that I had criticisms of them, you know, continuing to operate after a large cheating scandal. And just like I would have been critical of Stones firing up a stream the day after we fucking outed Possible. Right? Like, it's crazy to think that Stones had the wherewithal to shut their fucking stream down whenever they ran an investigation and somehow HCL didn't with the precedent already set. So it's like, yeah, I'm very outspoken, but like, none of this is personal. It's just do better. You know, like, all of us can do better. And anybody who's critical of the things that we do, 
I'm all ears. Like, we're always looking to try to do better. We all should be in the space because it's not fucking new. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not a part of like the first wave of content creation. We're not a part of the first wave of live streams. Like, you know, HCL, Bally's, like, we're talking iteration eight, nine, 10, 12. Like, we've seen it time and time and time again. We've seen it go from tape to live or live to tape to, actual live stream and people have done it really fucking well yeah. you know it's the same thing with uh with podcasting going from audio to video like people have done it really well and like we're always trying to up the game you know like we're not sitting here resting on any sort of laurels look how big this fucking space is imagine if we just all sat kumbaya indian style in the middle of the fucking room with one solo <laughs> camera yeah you know yeah, and one mic that we were sharing because that's mm -hmm. what this feels like to me you know, you have all this shit available to you and you just say like, nah, 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 nah. Let's get back to basics here. Let's all uh, sit around a dining room table and share a mic. Just like, or don't, you know? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my take a beat. <laughs> yeah, <geez. laughs> wasn't, wasn't written out, but man, I'm in the fucking muck. Yeah, it sounds like you're exhausted. I am. I, honestly, I am. I, I, I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I'm grouchy. I'm cranky. <laughs> we can tell. I'm just so mad. I'm so mad that it looks the exact same. There's no way you could turn on last night's stream and turn on a live at the bike stream for a year ago and tell them apart. Right. There's just no way. Like, how many people watching thought that that was live from the Tropicana? You know, it's like, there's just no way you could tell that it's a new one at Commerce. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. It just to needs me. to be more lighted, more inviting. And yeah, it's not inviting at all. Yeah, it's like here's your death. When sentence. you say that, it sounds so simple, huh? When you say it like that, it sounds so simple. I mean, it should be, but it's not. I mean, choices were made, Conrad. I mean, listen, choices <laughs> were fuck made. Fuck your choice. <laughs> choices were made. You have some shit you got to do, and yeah, do it. You have a black background. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know why? Look at that shot. Look at that. Because there's, there's lighting. Light. It's there's fucking light. well lit. I have. Mm -hmm. I have a couple plants right yeah, there. Yeah. We, we put things to break up the void. I don't, I don't wear too many black shirts. Also, you still have depth behind you. Yeah. You know that you're a solid six to eight feet away from that wall. Yeah. So, Great. all right. Now turn off the lights and move the background closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> See what that looks like. Okay. Well, Bally is going to fire up again on Wednesday. They have Schwan Lu in the building. I believe Phil Locke is going to be there Thursday. I'll be tuning in. I don't know how much of it I'll watch, but I'm curious to see what, if anything, adjusts. Uh, that's going to do it for us today. <laughs> don't forget, we have our Twitter Tuesday. You can head over to at OnlyFriendsPod. And we have a question for you all. It says, please give me an example of something said to you that was so astonishingly stupid, you can never forget it. <laughs> we'll start. Oh, study GTO players can't exploit live fields. <laughs> but um, WSOP said I can't play in within thirty feet of my roommate. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that one's pretty brutal. How about black looks great <laughs> in an enclosed space on camera? <sighs> all right that's gonna do it for us we're gonna be back tomorrow uh we have a pretty big episode uh i don't know how many of you saw it but patrick howard mobius poker tweeted out a long thread today about ignition poker the bot and collusion rings that are taking place there and what the players are hopeful to do moving forward we're going to cover that entire thread as well as hopefully uh i'm going to try to talk to patrick and at least get a statement out of him between tomorrow today and tomorrow uh, be sure to join us then noon Pacific, as always, live from the Sulfur Wild YouTube. We'll see you guys all tomorrow. Peace. Later, Peace. Squad.